For this demonstration, I've used my Contour HD, my Sony voice recorder, and my VIO POV. One thing that's very important to understand is the settings you have for your camera and audio device. If these settings are not matched up 100%, you will encounter drift. And unfortunately, when you're using various types of consumer grade hardware, more than likely, the settings within these uh, cameras and voice recorders will not 100% match up. So you're going to have a little bit of drift. And what I am planning to try to show you are ways that you can get around that drift. Ways that you can still edit your video, have things sync up, but not be so apparent that the audio and video has drifted out of sync. In order to determine what settings are used, in most cases you could just play the, the videos in your player and look at the information provided. Uh, in my case I use QuickTime and QuickTime gives me a good idea of what these settings are. You can also find some free utilities. Uh, G-Spot is one for Windows. On the Mac I use a product called Video Spec. Again it's a very it's a free product and it shows me what settings uh, my videos and audio contain. And I've already dropped all three of those files into the, uh, the uh, video spec product. And I can see here each of the three files is listed in a column and it shows me a lot more information than I really really need. The important bits are what type of container is it in. A container generally references the extension of the file. Uh, a movie file for QuickTime, uh, Microsoft Wave or WAV for a PCM audio, uh, AVI for an audio interleaved. The other bit that's important is the format. So in the case of my audio, I don't have uh, audio recording, I don't have a video track, so there's nothing listed here. But for my contour cam, it records an H264. For my VIO, it records an XVID. Or actually, it's DivX. This reports it as XVID. XVID is the free version of DivX. And again, the four C's is really just the, the encoder, H264 or XVID or DivX. And the other piece that is very important is for your video and to get them synced up is your frame rate. In the case of the contour cam, it uses what's called drop frame. So it, it actually records at 29.970 frames per second. The VIO records at a full 30 frames per second. And don't, don't be overwhelmed by this. It, it's important information to know, but it's, it's not anything that's going to kill you. Uh, the one thing that you want to decide is which of your files or which of your cameras is going to be your primary video. And in this case, it's going to be my contour. So when I set up my timeline in my editor, this information becomes very important. I want my timeline to match my, my frames per second, my FPS. I want it to match the width and height. In this case, it's 720p, 720 by 1280. And I want it to match my format. Now in my case the editor I use is Final Cut Pro and even though it will edit an H.264 movie the playback and previews are horrendous when I'm using H.264. H.264 takes a lot of processing power to uh, to edit with. So what, what I generally do is I convert my files to a format that is more easily editable within Final Cut. Uh, and whether you do that step yourself or not uh, is, is up to you. And what encoding you use in that step is up to you. Uh, in my case, I use a lossless encoding, which means that even though I'm encoding it to another format, it, it is virtually a lossless file. And um, it is something that Final Cut Pro uses. It, it's not a format that you would probably have on Windows at all. Uh, but there are other other formats, other lossless formats that you could use. Just remember that if you encode to a lossy format, anything that really smashes a file down and compresses it really, really uh, small, you're going to lose quality every time you re-encode. So if you do choose to try to 
get all your files into the same format uh, for editing, make sure you're using a lossy or, or rather a lossless format. Um, on Windows, uh, Huffy, I believe it's Huffy HV. Now, I'm sorry, I really don't remember. It's been a very long time since I edited a Windows file or edited with Windows. Um, but there are lossless formats available out there. Anyway, uh, check on it yourself and determine what is right for you. And if I can bring up my files, you'll see that I converted the HD contour cam video, which originally was 1.1 gig, and when I converted it, it jumped to a whopping 15 gigs. When I converted the VIO, it jumped from 430 megabytes to over eight, uh, eight and a half gigabytes. So, so these files are, are just going to be temporary. I'm going to delete those when I'm all done. Um, I didn't need to convert the Sony voice recorder file. Uh, it is set at 44.1 kilohertz and 16-bit sampling rate. And what I did is I went ahead and set that to uh, the audio in both of my video files to, to that uh, sampling rate. Um, the VIO was originally just 32 kilobits mono, and the contour cam was 48 kilobits uh, stereo. Um, that, that 48 kilobits, by the way, is considered DVD quality. 44.1 is considered CD quality. Okay, before bringing my files into my editor, I've set up my sequence or my timeline settings to match my primary video, which is going to be the contour cam. That's going to be my, my main video. And I've got it set for Apple ProRes, which is a uh, Final Cut Pro lossless codec. And I've got my audio settings for 44.1 and 16 bits. And that's what I need to have set up here. And I've got it set for full 720p, which is 1280 by 720. And now I'm all ready to go. This, this will make it easier when I'm doing my editing as it will uh, mean that the editor will have to render the files less often and it'll be a lot easier to play back and see what I've got to work with.